I'm doing clarity and sharpening together because they do something very similar to achieve a similar effect, even though they are in different tabs. Look, clarity is in my basic tab, but when I come to details and turn on detail refinement, that is your sharpening. Let's come back to basic. Both of them aim to increase the sharpness and punch of an image, and they do so by increasing the contrast around edge areas. The main difference being is that sharpening does it on a fine level and clarity is a bigger effect. Those of you who have the Affinity Photo Solid Foundation course will have seen the video about sharpening, so part of this you will already know. But to recap, take a look at this. All right, I'm in the general photo persona at the moment. This is that awful moment at Christmas when your uncle starts doing his finger shadow puppets against the wall and this is his impression of Bambi's mum two seconds after the gun goes off and no one's making eye contact with anyone else. Then he asks you to take a photo to give to his agent and mysteriously it's come out fuzzy and indistinct and that's got nothing to do with you. So, he wants you to make it, you know, a bit more clear, a bit sharper because, you know, you're very clever at that sort of stuff and your time is for free. Well look, this is what happens when you use clarity. I'm going to come to my adjustment layers. I'm going to stick on levels because I want to up the contrast. So I'm going to take up my black level so the whole thing gets darker. I'm going to take my white level so the whole thing gets lighter there. Now look here, see, I've still got this fuzzy edge here. Watch what happens when I make the contrast more extreme. Well, look at that. A sharper edge. As I pull the end sliders in, I'm increasing the contrast. What I'm making Affinity do is decide which pixels are dark and making them darker, and which pixels are light and making them lighter. They're being sorted into dark or light, and as a result, that blurry border between the dark and light is getting narrower, because there's less and less greyish pixels on the border. So now, they're dark or light, one or the other. Well, that's contrast for you, and it makes the entire picture dark or light, instead of going dark to mid-tones and gradually up to light, and we weren't asking for a contrasty picture. So, let's make that invisible. So the clever trick here is that Affinity looks over your picture, and if it finds a border between dark and light, like say this one here, it increases the contrast just around that part, and this is what it looks like. The original dark and light areas, they stay unaffected, apart from where they border another area. And those border areas are made more contrasty. Now the only way you can increase the contrast is by increasing the dark and light areas. So that's what it does. Look, greyish going darker and darker and darker to the border. And here a light grey going lighter and lighter and lighter until it hits the border. Okay, so going back to my leaves, I will come and I will zoom in a little bit so we get a clear idea of what are we looking at. And all I'm going to do is up the clarity right the way up. Did you see that happen? I'll take it down again. Look along this edge here. As I up the clarity, you're starting to get that effect we've just seen. The borders are getting darker or lighter, and you're getting more contrast around the edges. And that is what gives you a clearer effect. If I come to Command plus zero, take a look at the picture as a whole. No clarity. Lots of clarity. Clarity is a magic button. It does a lot, it does a very nice thing, and I use it quite a lot, but I won't use it all the time. All right, now take a look at this. It's a portrait, as you may have guessed. Now, let's try our clarity button because we want to get a little bit more eye-popping detail. Take it up and, oh my goodness, that does not look good. In general, clarity, don't use it on faces. It does not give a good effect. It may give a stylized effect, but if you're going for a flattering portrait, no, avoid it. Take it way back. But you can use detail refinement, which is sharpened by any other name. Now, instead of just having the one slider, you've got two sliders, radius and mount. The way to use these is just crank both of them up to get a very strong effect. And then when you can see the effect, then you start dialing it down. And already you can see it is more flattering than clarity for faces. Now, what it's doing is, do you remember with the clarity, how we got that little border which spread out? Well, you can control how wide that border is by using the radius. You know what? 
I'm going to come zoom in on this because it's very, very difficult to see anything. Focusing on an eye, something like that. That's what you tend to look at the most in a picture. So, radius. Let's crank the amount right up. So we've got the most chance of seeing it. At the moment, the radius is on zero, so there's no effect. You've got slightly softer. As I crank the radius up, you can see it start to get sharper as the radius gets bigger. Now that's probably a bit too much there. It will depend on the size of your photo. If you have a very large photo, the radius is going to be bigger. I'll take it down to about there, then I'll crank the amount down to zero, and then, as before, I'll gradually dial in the amount I want. By the way, did you know that by the time your camera gives you a JPEG, it's already had a go at sharpening your image? Yep, raw files by comparison don't get any such treatment. And they can come out looking a bit ill-defined by comparison. It's up to you to sharpen your images. Now, the good thing is you can happily use sharpen with faces, and so that's what we've done right here. Now, sharpen can really help an image, and it's one of the default things that you do. But you have to balance that up with image noise. And image noise is something we'll talk about in the next lesson.